Praise God. Amen. Good morning, church. The word says to come into his house with thanksgiving. Can we say that together? Come into his house with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. I want to ask you all to rise to your feet with us today. And let's get ready to worship God. Amen. Let's give him our heart. Let's give him our all. Give him our praise. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. Come on, sure, let's sing it out. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. You never change. You never fail, oh God.
are your promises, Lord. We look forward to all the many blessings, Lord, that you are going to continue to fulfill in our lives, Lord. But today we come to you, we dedicate our service to you, Lord Jesus. We know that your spirit is already here, and we open up our heart and mind to receive, Lord, the words that you're going to be anointing today and speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Can we give God another hand of praise once again? Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's continue to worship Him. God so loved the world, amen. He gave His only Son. From all you weary, let's sing that. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well.
promise, amen, whoever would believe in the name of Jesus will be saved, amen. Can we give God another praise offering? We thank you, Lord. Father, we come before your presence, Lord God. Father, that you would change us and make us to be more like you, Lord. Father, as we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts, Lord, we know that you will save us. You are faithful and true to save us, Lord.
this morning. We thank you, Lord. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises have never failed us, amen. Your promises are true, Lord God, and they will always come to pass. And Father, you are the one that we worship, Lord God. Faithful, good Lord. Father, be with us today. Go before us. Speak to us. Fill us, Lord. And most of all, change us to be more like you. Change us according to your promises, Lord God, of life, of the resurrection, Lord, that you are. Father, we're careful to give you all the glory and honor for your son Jesus' name and all of God's people says, amen, amen. You may be seated. Can we give God another hand of praise? Amen. Amen. His promises are yes and amen. They are true. Amen. I want to welcome everybody in the house. Good to see everyone here this morning. Amen. Brother Jabby and the family, good to see you. Praise God. Amen. Brother Keeney as well. Praise God. And those as well online, welcome to the house of God. At this time, we're going to continue in our time of worship. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings. We'd like to call the usher to come forward and receive that for us. And then Brother Lamar will pray for our offerings. team. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to pray for our tithes and offerings. And uh, just want to share Chronicles 29, 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything that comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We want to thank you. We want to thank you, Father, for bringing us all here together this morning, Lord. We just ask that you continue to look after all that are here in the house, Lord, and those that are online, Lord. We thank you for all that they have given, Lord, from their heart, and we just ask that you continue to bless them and may they continue to prosper and continue to look to you for all their needs and all things that come from you, Lord, just as the scripture says. And we just ask that you bless our service today. May it be all that you intend for it to be, Lord, because we know that it's your word that we that we thrive from, Lord, that we that builds us up from inside. We thank you, Lord. We uh, pray to you in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in His name, we pray. Amen. 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 Man, thank you, Lamar. Thank you, Issa. Good morning, Amen, Church. This morning, I'd like to dismiss our Faith Vision kids to their classes this morning. As they are going to their class, our scripture reading is going to be Psalms 119. 
verse 156, 156 to 160, Psalms 119, verses 156 to 160. And the word of the Lord says this, Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. Revive me according to your judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your testimonies. I see the treacherous and I'm disgusted because they do not keep your word. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, once again. We come before you. We give you all the glory and the honor, the praise, the thanksgiving that you deserve, Lord God. You are worthy of it all. Father, once again, as we look into your word today, Father, I pray that you'd continue to mold us, shape us, chip away anything that needs to be chipped away, Lord God, this morning, and make us to be more like you. Father God, that we would leave this place not the same way that we came in, Lord God, but that we would leave filled with your Holy Spirit. And Father God, we thank you for your word once again. To you be the glory and honor. And through your son Jesus' name we pray, we all said, amen, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> God is good. And all the time. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 1 to 7. As you all know, the men have been going through the book of Proverbs, and our last study was in Proverbs chapter 12. We actually finished the whole, the whole chapter, but we're just going to be looking at seven verses. I encourage you to go back and read the rest of the chapter. It's, it is such a blessing uh, for it was a blessing for me, Brother John, and all the men, and uh, Brother Kini, we were on it uh, this this uh, past few weeks. But I wanted to share this chapter with you this morning and talk about the house of the righteous man or woman, the house of the righteous in Christ. That house will stand. Amen. The house of the righteous man or woman that house will stand. In other words, the house of the one who loves God, the house of the one who obeys God. We just read in our Psalms this morning of how we love the precepts and the laws of God. That's what sustains us. And then in verse 160, it reminds us that the whole counsel and the, and the word of God, it is truth and it endures forever, amen? And as we cling on to the word of God, the whole truth of God, guess what? Our house will stand because we hang on to the righteousness of the word of God. Amen, church? The house of the righteous will stand. Let's read in verse 1. It says this, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Tough words this morning. Hey, don't get mad at me. I'm just, I'm just preaching the word of God this morning. Amen. In other words, if I can use another word for this last word, it is foolishness. Someone who is unwise, who is uncaring, doesn't care about anything, about living righteous or living according to the words of God, or even has a consideration for anyone else, that person is what? The writer of Proverbs, King Solomon and many other proverb writers in his time says, you are a stupid person. I remember one time I was posting up our scripture of the day, many, uh, probably like five years ago, and I used the verse that says, you know, uh, unwise man who doesn't trust in the Lord is a foolish man. And I got an email or an inbox on a Facebook saying, brother, that's some harsh language. And I said, you're right. I, you know, I totally agreed with this person. He, he did not like the verse that I posted up for the day. But in my heart, I was like, well, I'm, I'm sorry you feel like that. 
But this is the word of God. The word of God is saying, whoever does not love, whoever loves instruction, guess what? Loves knowledge. But whoever hates correction, whoever hates instruction, whoever hates knowledge, that person is a foolish person. And we're talking about the righteous person in their house will stand. Well, guess what? Because of their foolishness, their house will not stand. Because of their foolishness and their carelessness to not live accordingly to the knowledge and the wisdom and the understandings of the words of God, you will perish. One of my favorite verses, John chapter 10, verse 10, it says this, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Look at that. Satan doesn't just come to steal from you, church. He comes to steal and kill you. He doesn't just stop there. He comes to steal from you. He comes to kill you. And then what? He comes to annihilate you. He comes to destroy you. He doesn't want to have any evidence of you lasting or even being present here on earth. He wants to get rid of you. Many of us are wanting to be friends with the enemy. Many of us are making pleas and negotiations with the enemy. But the last part of that verse says this, but Jesus, amen, Jesus comes to give life and he gives life. And not just life, but life more abundantly. When we love God's instruction, when we love God's knowledge, we love righteousness. Amen, church. When we love knowledge and instruction from the Lord, we love life. We love God's promises that we just sung about. We love his will. And the promise for us, the men and women who trust in God, you will stand because you love the instructions and corrections of God. Hebrews chapter 12 tells us a wonderful story of a father who loves his son. And guess what that loving father does? He corrects him. He chastens him. And then that chapter says, it's not comfortable in the meantime Nobody likes being disciplined in a godly way, right? Nobody, nobody wants to in, in, receive that, let alone the physical discipline. Nobody likes that. But guess what? A loving father, a godly father will instruct and discipline his daughter, his son, because he wants them to walk in the ways of the Lord and stand and last and live a meaningful life unto God, giving glory to the Father and him alone and being a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. He who loves instruction and knowledge of God, loves life, loves the promise of God. Let us not be foolish or as the word of God says here, stupid. Amen. Let us be wise in the Lord. Let's continue on. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2 and 3 says this, but a good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Amen, church. The root of the righteous man or woman will not be moved, even though you go through a storm in your life, and storms are temporary. They don't last long, but tough people last. Amen? Storms and situations and circumstances, they come and go. But the root of the righteous person will not be moved. What a blessing that is. And what is that root? We find ourselves rooted in the word of God. And we will never move. Look at verse 2. Let's go back to verse 2. A good man obtains favor from the Lord. Guess what, men and women, brothers and sisters? I'm reminded of the verse in Romans chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. It says, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, we didn't even deserve it. You were a good person, but your goodness doesn't cut it. 
You didn't even, uh, just, Jesus didn't even have to die for you. Yet in the, in the midst of your sin, while you were still sinners, God laid his life down through his son for you and I. And the, the blessing of verse 2 says this, a good man, a good woman, who has come to their senses that I am not righteous at all. I am not worthy of God's grace and mercy. I seek your blessings, and Father God, I obtain it. I obtain favor from you, Lord. I obtain it through this, by humility, by surrendering to the Father, knowing that I am not right with him, and I've come to my senses that I am a sinner. And in return, God gives me favor, right? Romans chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 clearly reminds us and, and, and explains this. You, we were not righteous. And very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. But for a good man, for a good woman, an unrighteous person, God, through his son Jesus, laid his life down for us. Even in the midst of our sins, he died for us. Look at this. We are unworthy, but yet we obtain favor from the Lord. Amen? When we were unrighteous, God still blesses us with his favor. And he says this, but a man with wicked intentions, a man that is out to do no good, God will condemn him. God will turn, turn his face away from him, his blessings away from him. And then he says, a man is not established by wickedness. If you think you're, you're trying to get somewhere uh, establishing yourself by doing, the, doing wickedness and doing sin, hurting others to be on top of others, and, and as far as success and wealth in this world, guess what? The wickedness will not be established through their unrighteousness. Praise God. But when we do what is right in the sight of God, his blessings says this, the root of the righteous will not be moved. The root of the righteous and the house of the righteous will stand permanent. Why? Because they're founded on the word of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and 19 says this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. The love of God. Amen? May be able to comprehend. And this is what God wants for us. He wants us to know his love. Comprehend. Understand. Instruction. Love. Knowledge. God, godly knowledge. Comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Who? How many people in the house of the Lord today wants to be filled with the fullness of God? Amen? Not just a partial of God's grace and mercy, not just a partial of God's love, but we want all of you, Lord. And he has done that for you and I. The day that we've given our lives to him, he gave us his all. Amen? He wants us to know, my son, how deeply I love you. How I love you in width and in depth and in height. Matchless God that we serve in the fullness of God. It never runs dry. Amen. Every day it's brand new. It never gets old. The grace and the mercy of God is new every single day. Amen, church? As we are rooted in the love of Christ Jesus. Let's continue on in verse 4. It says, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. We were talking about this on our study. <laughs> what does that mean, guys? That's pretty tough right there. And, and, and I want all the sisters to know, we, uh, no, David just didn't pick this out to, to get on you guys. No, not at all. This is the verse and the word of God today. Because we as men can learn from this as well. Amen? But, but let's look at this. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. What is this excellence? And what is this crown? In other, in other words, 
a noble woman, a righteous woman, a Proverbs 31 woman, amen, who is not lazy but gets up in the morning, prays for her children, goes out to work and seeks out whatever she can with her hands and what her life uh, can, can be a blessing to others do. And she comes back and she prepares her house. And she is a blessing to her husband. And Ephesians 5 tells us she is a, a submitting wife, a woman, a godly woman, a woman who yields to God first, amen, and prays for her husband, prays for her children. Wouldn't that make you happy, men? Right? It does. In worldly terms, there's, there's such a thing called a uh, trophy wife or trophy husband. You may have heard of this phrase. There's things called a trophy relationship. But in worldly terms, there's conditions to these, these, uh, these phrases. A trophy wife is someone who is a wife of, some, uh, of an older man who is successful. And so the man goes out to seek uh, some value in himself and some pride in himself, and he seeks for a younger, younger woman. And the younger woman only sticks on to this relationship because uh, the dad is the, is the provider. And in street terms, uh, he's called the sugar daddy. <laughs> and if the sugar daddy don't provide no more, she don't want to be in that relationship no more. Sad to say. But these are the conditions of the world. Same thing goes with the trophy husband. The wife is only in the relationship because the man, you know, once again is, is providing and whatever he can do to satisfy and keep his wife. Trophy relationship is this, is, is a relationship that uh, as younger folks, we just want to, you know, the younger folks want to be in a relationship that uh, builds up their image makes them look cool, but they really don't care about the other person. It is not like that in the ways, in the things of God. Amen? It says this, we can learn a lot from this lesson, in this verse right here. An excellent wife, a wife of nobility, a wife of humility, a wife who is godly and praying always for the will of God is the crown of her husband. In other words, her husband trusts her as she is the Proverbs 31 woman. He trusts her, and he is a godly proud, if I can use that word, to be proud of his wife in a godly sense, that he's always thanking God for his wife who is faithful, hardworking, and submissive in the ways of praying for her husband. He is the crown. She is the crown. And he wears that with what? With a godly pride, amen? Not saying that I've, I've attained this wife of mine through my knowledge or through my strength or through my wealth, but I've, t I've obtained and I've been blessed with a godly wife who puts God first in our relationship through righteousness, through knowledge, in the knowledge of God, through uh, loving God's word, through praying diligently. God has blessed me with a noble woman. And that noble woman is this. She sees something wrong. She corrects that. She sees something that's missing. She fixes that. Or broken, she fixes that. And guess what? It doesn't just stop with the women. Because it, it, it's, you know, when we're, we're looking at the word of God, it looks back at us as, as a mirror and I'm putting this I'm putting this to myself as well how can I be an excellent husband to my wife am I a crown that my wife puts on sometimes I don't know but it doesn't seem like it I seem like maybe I'm disappointing or getting on my, my, my wife's nerves sometimes she'd be saying you're so annoying <laughs> You know, all jokes aside, at the end of the day is, how can I be an excellent husband, a godly husband, a humble husband to my wife? I do not want to be the person who causes shame and rottenness, bringing rottenness to the relationship, to my bones. And we've all seen that. 
Wives, you don't want to be the cause of shame that brings rottenness to your relationship to your husbands. A couple of weeks ago, we have access to the internet. Came across a story of a young man who went live on his Facebook feed, who just who who let his kids go to the police officers. Take my kids. I don't want to harm them. What he had recently just did was shoot his wife, his girlfriend. I don't know what the cause and what, what happened in the relationship, but all I know is this. The relationship was toxic. It was ungodly. It was all nice and dandy at first, but something went wrong. Righteousness no longer dwelt in the midst of their relationship. God no longer dwelt in the, in the midst of their relationship. And that shame, that hurt, brought a pain that resulted in this fatality of this young woman. We don't ever want to get to a position or or to a point in our relationships where we hurt someone else. And Proverbs is reminding us this morning, preventing us from going down this route. Don't be the shame or the sin or the wickedness in your relationship that brings rottenness to the bones of the other person in your marriage, in your godly relationship. Amen. If it isn't godly, I pray that it would become godly. But be the blessing that would bring healing and life to the bones of your relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. An excellent, noble, godly wife is the trust of her husband, is the love of her husband, is the grace and mercy of her husband, and vice versa, men. A excellent husband is the love, life, grace, and mercy of his wife. We can all learn from that. That the only way the righteous Uh, the, the, the house of the righteous will stand is if we put God in the midst of our relationships and in our lives and love the instructions and the knowledge of God. Obtain the favor from God and know that we will never establish anything on our sins or wickedness, but that when we trust in God and allow him to work in our hearts and in our lives, the promise is the root of the righteous will not be moved. The root of the righteous will always be replenished because it's planted by the rivers of God. Verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are lie and wait for blood. Verse 6. But the mouth of the upright will deliver them. Amen? The mouth of the upright will deliver them. I pray today that we are using our mouth to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. I pray that we are using our mouth to speak life into our relationships, to our brothers and sisters, to our families, to our marriages. I pray that not only our mouth, but our hands and our feet and the instruments of our bodies are used to the glorification and the exaltation of the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that our instruments of our bodies and the spirit within us is not ashamed to proclaim and declare the goodness of God. He says the mouth of the upright will deliver them. Brothers and sisters, when you speak the truth of God, guess what? It delivers the brokenhearted. It delivers the demon-possessed in the name of Jesus. Amen? It heals. It forgives. It, It mends the wounds that have been created decades, perhaps, if you would speak the truth and the word of God in love. Amen? Let's look at that again. Verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right. Our thinking needs to be right. <laughs> Think good things. That's why Psalms 119 says, hide the word of God in your heart so that you will not sin against God. Hurt one another. 
so that we would meditate on your words day and night. Amen? So our thinking and our feeling and our actions are right. Praise God. Amen. See, the only way we're going to be able to speak life is when we think life. Amen. When we meditate on the living word of God every single day. Amen. I, I know you guys might be, you know, tired of us saying, be in your word, stay in your word, guys. Whatever we're, you know, whatever we can do to creatively encourage you. I, I think I've ran out of all of, you know, I've ran out of all of the creative things that I can do to encourage you to be in the word of God. It's like, man, I've heard this every single week, David. You keep telling us, Pastor Paul keeps telling us, John keeps telling us, our youth leaders keep telling us, stay in your word, stay in your word. If you're not staying in the word of God, guess what other word you're staying in? You're staying in the, the worldly word. And you're thinking upon that. And then you're acting out the worldly things that are ungodly and unpleasing to God. The only solution to that, Christians, is being in the Word of God, meditating and thinking of the Word of God every single day so that our results and actions would be godly and glorifying to God. Amen. So whenever you hear us say, <laughs> stay in your Word, don't get mad at us. We're just trying to encourage you, but also keep us accountable too. We can't tell you something that we ain't doing. Know that we are right alongside with you, praying and being in the word of God every single day. Amen. Amen. But the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. It's easy to get counsel from the wicked. It's easy. They can always speak to us. And it's the, the foolish thing, verse 1, don't be stupid to follow that. All right? Can I just say that this morning? Can I just be real with you this morning? That we are foolish sometimes to fall into the words and the counsel of the, of the unrighteous. Oh, that seems like a good, that seems like good counsel, brother. And it wasn't even godly at all. So easy. Oh, they, they're, they're, a pe they're a person of accomplishment. They have they have some letters after their names. <laughs> I can trust them. They're, they're rolling around in a nice car. And they give you some advice that is ungodly. And guess what happens? It leads you down the path of destruction and heartbreak. But the word of God says this. David, I, I, I wanted you to know. If you would just be still and know that I am God, you will overcome. Don't rush into it. Right, the Elvis Presley song, Fools Rush In. Yeah, everything seems gold and, and, and nice and shiny. But all that glitters ain't gold, right? And he says this. Be careful. Their counsels are deceitful. They are wicked. And verse 6 says, the words of the wicked are this, revenge. Revenge. Lie and wait for blood. Wait till someone comes. Devour them, and then you will feel better, right? But yet the counsel of the Lord is not such. The counsel of the Lord says, just wait on me. Trust in me. Trust in Jesus. In his perfect time, it will come to pass. Just wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. Amen, church. Amen. In contrast, the, the counsel of the wicked says, they did it to you, so you got to do it to somebody else. Hurt people hurt people. They stole from you, you got to steal from them. They talked about you, you got to talk about them. Whatever it takes to make you feel better, there is no law against it. And that is not the way of God. How is our righteous house going to stand, church, is when we stay rooted in God, in love, 
in patience? How are we going to build our relationship, righteous marriages today? Staying rooted in the counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is truth and it lasts forever. It endures forever, church. Amen? Amen? But the mouth of the upright will deliver them. Speak the words of God. It will bring deliverance. It will bring healing. And it will bring victory in your situation. Amen? Amen. Lastly, verse 7 says this. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. Amen? Amen. Your house is going to stand today, church. I can guarantee you that. There's nothing in life that I guarantee for sure. uh, Life is uncertain. But when we talk about the things and the truths of God, we can guarantee that. Amen. Amen? Always we can guarantee the word of God. We can guarantee this, that the wicked are overthrown and are no more. In our studies of Joel, we see see God loving his people, the nation of Israel. Amen? And he preserves them. And he's going to bring down the nations that will judge them. And he says, bless them. As you bless them, I will bless you. But if you curse them, I will curse you. Watch out. We see many nations that have come against Israel, they are no more today. The wicked are overthrown. And not just that, but they are no more. But the promise is the house of the righteous will stand. If you will turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 46 to 49, you guys are familiar with this verse. But this is an encouraging way that we can trust in the Lord and know that our house will stand because of his because of his word. Luke chapter 6 verse 46 to 49 says this, but why do you call me Lord, Lord and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. Right? Don't just hear the words of God, but do them. Amen. Amen. That is the truth here this morning, church, right? If we don't do it, we're like like verse 1. We don't want to be the verse 1 guy who doesn't listen to the Lord. But Jesus says this. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose... The stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Amen? It was founded on Jesus. It was founded on his word. How is your righteous house going to stand? It's going to stand because it's built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because it is built on the word of God. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth or on sand without a foundation against which the stream beat violently or vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. <laughs> I'm reminded of the, uh, the uh, nursery rhyme. I'll puff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down and that's what happens to this house. The wind and the, the, the waters and the sea beat on the house that was not founded on the rock of Jesus Christ, amen, on Jesus Christ, was not founded on the word of God, and it kept beating, it kept blowing, and guess what? It fell, and great was its fall. But the house that was built on Christ Jesus, the solid rock, our refuge, amen, our strong tower, The storms of life came and it hit the foundations. It hit the wall. It hit the roof. It tried to go through the the windows, but it couldn't because it was founded on our Lord and Savior. It was founded on the Good Shepherd Church. It was founded 
on the great physician. It was founded on our great redeemer. The lover of our soul, the lover of all that we go through in life and wants to redeem you, the lover of your life, Jesus Christ. Today, church, as we close, I pray that you would love instruction and love knowledge. Obtain the favor from God that is lasting, that is satisfying. And be rooted in the love of God today. Be rooted in the love of God's word and the love of God's work today. How will your righteous house stand today, church? Hallelujah. By building on the rock of Jesus Christ. Building on the truth of Jesus Christ. It will not wither away. It will not disappoint you. It will always satisfy you. Whatever you're thirsting and hungering for today, guess what? Hunger for the things of God, and he will quench your thirst and hunger. You will no longer hunger and thirst for the things of this world. Oh, I've got to get this. Oh, I've got to do this to satisfy and please me and, and to show and prove others of who I am. No, you'll be content in Christ Jesus. That the only person that you're looking to satisfy is him alone. And guess what? He will never disappoint you, church. You will always leave satisfied, content in Christ Jesus. And the encouragement for us today is build your house, your righteous house, on the solid foundation, on the rock of Jesus Christ. His word, his truth, his saving grace. And receive life and life abundantly in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. So I want to challenge you, church, wherever you may be at in your life, personally, challenge you. You write that question for yourself today How am I going, going to build my righteous? Uh, righteousness in Christ and build this righteous house and stand in the midst of hardship and trials what do you got to do got to pray more got to read more fellowship more whatever it takes to grow in the Lord do it this week and give God the glory amen let us pray Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for today. Father, there are some truths here in this, these verses, Lord God, that were pretty, pretty rough. But true, Lord God. We needed to hear that. We needed to hear that we are foolish, Lord, without your wisdom. Foolish without your correction. And as your word specifically says out, Lord, we are walking away in our own stupidity, Father, and we don't want to do that no more. Father God, save us from that. It is foolishness. Father, we know as we trust in you, Lord God, you will redeem and save us. Father, we want to be the person that brings life into our relationships, Lord God. I lift up all the marriages here in our church that we would be a blessing, that we would consider others, Lord God, and most of all, our spouse, Lord, to be a blessing to them. We don't want to be the shame that brings rottenness, but rather we want to be the blessing that brings life to our relationships. Father, I lift up our, the marriages, Lord God, and for those that are in relationships, Lord Jesus, and they're praying it through, I pray, Lord God, that they would invite you to be the center of their relationships, Lord God, and make it to be a godly relationship that gives you glory, that keeps them pure. For the day that you unite them, Lord, if it's your will in marriage. 
Father, let us hold on and cling to the truths of your word, Father, that will save us. Save us, Lord God. Father, we want to give you glory and honor in our time, talents, and treasures. Help us to do that this week. Help your people to do that this week, Lord God. As they question these things in their heart, how can they draw closer to you, Lord? How can they stand and be righteous unto you? Father, I pray that you would minister to them right where they're at, Lord. And we are careful to give you all the glory and honor through your son Jesus' name by the power of your Holy Spirit. As we continue to pray today, church, I just want to ask anyone here visiting online with us or here in the house, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus is just a person that you've heard of. You don't have a relationship with him. You usually come to him when you're in need of something, as if he's a, a genie in a bottle or something like that. He's not. He's a savior of your soul, the creator of the universe. He is going to come back, and we must be ready when he comes back. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says this, you must confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that he is the son of God, that he died for your sins. He rose from the dead, and he is coming again. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10 says, It is by grace that we are saved. When we place our faith in him, it's not our works, lest anyone should boast. Where will you go after you die? Or pass from this world? Hallelujah. We must be ready. And I pray that heaven is the place. Jesus is where you want to be with and worship in eternity and not in hell. And if you're ready to make that decision today to have a personal relationship with Christ Jesus, would you kindly repeat these words with me? Sincerely mean it in your heart today. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I've run away from you many times. I've only come to you to, to get things and to, to get the blessings, but I've never committed to you, Lord. Today I commit my life to you. I hear your words, and I've been living this sinful life, and I don't want to be overthrown or to be no more. I want to have an eternal life with you, Christ Jesus, but also have a purposeful life here on earth. Today be my Lord, be my Savior. Save me, Jesus. In your name I pray. And we all said, amen, amen. If you said that prayer today, we give God all the glory and all the honor for all that he's done. It's not just a prayer that you think that you can say that will save you. No, it's what happens after the prayer. If you really meant it. This is the fruits and the marks of those that have given their life to Jesus is that they will continue to follow him all the days of their life. The things that they used to do, they no longer do no more. That is the marks and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that will be evident in your life if you truly meant that prayer. Please let us know if you said that prayer. Come to the front. We'd love to pray with you, anyone in the house. But at this moment, as we close, I'd like to invite our church. Let's all stand to our feet. And let's close out. He knows my name. so grateful for the word, for his instruction, for his wisdom, for his blessing and favor in these words, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor, Father. We want to do your work in us by reading your word, building a strong foundation, and getting rooted in you, Jesus.
Father, we love you, Lord, today. We thank you, Lord God, that we can pray, Lord, and you can hear us. And Father, you respond to us, Lord. You know our name. You know our every thoughts, Lord. Father, may our thoughts, Lord, be the thoughts of your words, meditating day and night on it, Lord, that we would please you, Lord, give glory to you. Father, be with your people today. Bless them and fill them, Lord, as we leave this place. May your Holy Spirit be with us, Lord God. May we give you all the glory and honor that you deserve. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Let's give God a hand of praise, amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed day. Greet one another, and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Something inside of me was dying I didn't know that you heard me each time I called You had a reason for those trials It seems I grew stronger every mile
Get caught up in my 